This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Modern China is very much the product of its ancient past. A glimpse into the rich tradition of the Middle Kingdom will help us understand the country's journey from the grandeur of imperial China, with its emphasis on honor and duty and its devotion to philosophy and art, to the thriving and productive socialist dictatorship state it is today. European civilizations had often overshadowed one of the greatest civilizations of ancient times, China. Yet the events and people that shaped ancient China had far-reaching implications. China's ancient history began millions of years ago. According to the widely accepted creation story, the land that is now China was created from the body, Pangu, a giant god who made the heavens and earth. He fashioned tiny humans out of clay. It came to life upon his death. When his giant body decomposed, it forced mountains and forests to spring up, rivers and lakes to form, and plants, birds, and animals to flourish. While the ancient stories are intriguing, the archaeological history is just as fascinating. Fossil evidence shows that an early cousin to modern man, Homo erectus, settled in China as far back as two million years ago, during the Paleolithic era. These pre-humans evolved differently than their counterparts in Africa. The stone tools they used and the settlements they established demonstrated their uniqueness. Homo sapien, modern man, appeared on the scene about 300,000 years ago, bringing more advancements in agriculture, hunting, and toolmaking. Early humans quickly learned that the fertile lands around large rivers, such as the Yellow River, Wei River, and Yangtze River, were ideally suited for agriculture so they made their homes there. Over time, they spread from the Yellow Sea and the Pacific Ocean to the Gobi Desert. The surrounding mountains, jungles, and oceans kept these early people relatively isolated. The people were free to develop their society, rituals, culture, and government. By the Copper Age, the ancient Chinese had further established their complex and sophisticated societies with kings and shamans ruling over farmers and merchants in large villages on the brink of becoming cities. From the ancient historian Sima Qian, we learn some of the key events of ancient China from around the 3rd millennia BCE. Much of the information, however, was recorded many years after events, mixing them with myths and folklore. For example, some rulers were described as having supernatural abilities, ruling for extraordinarily long periods. Sima Qian's texts tell us about the five emperors who ruled ancient China, beginning with the Yellow Emperor, considered the father of the Chinese people. Under the Yellow Emperor's rule, sometime between 2700 and 2600 BCE, the Chinese people moved from a nomadic lifestyle to permanent villages and cities, with a hierarchy of rulers and laws. The Yellow Emperor's reign was also the time when the Chinese people developed writing, mathematics, and a calendar method. Engineering feats soon followed. Around 2200 to 2100 BCE, ancient China was ruled by Yu the Great, who earned his spot on the throne by designing and overseeing the construction of a system of dams and canals that alleviated seasonal flooding and irrigated farm fields. As ruler, Yu the Great commissioned the construction of roads, established trade routes, and united several tribes into one. He exhibited all the qualities of a wise and just king. His people even felt that the taxes he imposed were fair and reasonable. His efforts of modernization helped move the Chinese culture forward by laying the groundwork for the great Chinese dynasties to come. China's Shang Dynasty, the earliest of China's dynasties that can be confirmed through historical evidence, was a period of advancements in art, writing, and calendar keeping that were founded by its predecessors. This dynasty's first ruler, Tang, rose to power around 1675 BCE after a military confrontation with Jia, a brutal and unjust ruler. As a battle between Tang and Jia was about to commence, Tang stood tall to address the soldiers on both sides of the battlefield. In a rousing speech, Tang outlined Jia's litany of flaws. His speech was so persuasive that many of Jia's generals switched sides to fight with Tang. Under Tang's rule, taxes were reduced, as were the number of conscriptions to the army. His prowess as a diplomat increased the land holdings of the dynasty 
to include territories in the Middle and Lower Yellow River Basin. He even doled out money from the Royal Treasury when his people, suffering from the impact of a disastrous drought, needed financial relief. Endeared by his subjects, Tang earned a reputation as one of the greatest kings in ancient China. However, the Shang Dynasty encountered a few centuries of instability after Tang's death. By about 1350 BCE, under the leadership of King Pan Gen, the golden age of the Shang Dynasty began. Metalworking, agriculture, art, and religious worship progressed quickly during this time. Coexisting with the people of the Shang Dynasty were the Zhu people of the Plains of Zhu. A Chinese-speaking group, the Zhu took refuge from the warring barbarians in the Wei River Valley. There, they adapted their way of life to be more like the Shang people. They built cities and implemented the Shang agricultural techniques. Occasional fighting broke out between the Shang people and the Zhu people, but the Shang dynasty remained in power and continued to view the Shu as their less advanced, more barbaric distant cousins. That ended when the ambitious Zhu leader, King Wen, hatched a plan to overthrow the Shang dynasty. He enlisted the help of neighboring tribes, bolstering his army and giving him the military might that he needed to defeat the Shang army. In 1046 BCE, King Wen's son, Wu, led an army of 50,000 soldiers into the Battle of Muye against the much larger Shang army of 700,000. According to legend, the soldiers of the Shang army were so disheartened living under the rule of the Shang dynasty that most refused to fight in the battle. Some even fought on the side of the Zhu. Seeing the defeat of his men, the Shang king retreated to his palace, setting it on fire in the act of suicide. For the next eight centuries, the Zhu dynasty ruled China. As the longest dynasty in ancient Chinese history, the Zhu dynasty witnessed the cultural awakening of China. This was a period when many innovations were invented. In agriculture, the iron plow was created, plants were grown in rows for the first time, and canals and other waterways were built to transport farm crops to market. Coins made of bronze and iron were introduced during the Zhu dynasty. The Chinese system of writing was improved. Medical advances were also made, including categorizing physicians by their specialties and keeping medical records on patients. Chinese inventors toyed with physics questions, leading them to create flying kites. In warfare, Chinese warriors improved on the crossbow's design, making it a weapon with deadly accuracy. The longest period in ancient Chinese history is that of Imperial China. Beginning in 221 BC and extending until 1912, the era known as Imperial China is marked with the rise and fall of several dynasties, including the Qin, Ming, and Jin dynasties. One of the early dynasties in the Imperial era was the Han Dynasty, which ruled China from 202 BC to 220 AD. During the Han Dynasty, various factions of China were unified under a strong central government, headed by an emperor. This was a time of political stability and advancements in art, science, and religion that greatly affected the country for the next 2,000 years. The land holdings of the Han Dynasty expanded to include most of present-day China. Perhaps the most significant movement of the Han Dynasty was the adoption of Confucianism as the dominant school of thought. Confucianism, based on the writings of the teacher and philosopher Confucius, who lived from 551 to 479 BCE, held that humans were the masters of their own destinies. Confucius taught that people could learn and improve themselves to reach enlightenment, with an emphasis on moral correctness, commitment to self-improvement, and devotion to community. The ideals of Confucianism promoted a stable, orderly society, with a focus on scholarly pursuits like mathematics, science, art, and literature. Universities were established, great books were written, and monuments carved. During the latter years of the Han Dynasty, important trade routes like the Silk Road opened, bringing the people of China in contact with foreign traders from as far away as Rome. Although China's culture and civilization evolved in relative isolation, the ancient Chinese rivaled the ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians in its sophistication, societal structure, and accomplishments. Like other ancient cultures, the Chinese created a system of writing that allowed them to record historical events, share news and ideas, and conduct trade. 
Some of the earliest examples of ancient Chinese writing dates to the 13th century and the Shang Dynasty. Beginning as a pictograph form of writing, in which a symbol was drawn to look like the item it represented, Chinese text evolved into a logographic writing style, in which one character stood for a complete word or phrase. The Chinese written language remains one of the most complex and difficult languages, with over 50,000 individual characters. Perhaps the most significant and impressive tangible artifacts that remain from ancient China are the famed terracotta warriors. Unearthed in 1974, the collection of approximately 8,000 statues are all unique. Each is a life-size depiction of a Chinese soldier, with different facial features, clothing, and insignia. The army of statues guard the tomb of the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang, and stand ready to serve him in the afterlife. The terracotta warriors were made to be buried. They remained entombed since 210 BCE until they were discovered by farmers digging a well and excavated by archaeologists later. The site where the terracotta warriors were discovered, now a World Heritage Site, is still being studied because of the important insight it offers. The fall of the Han Dynasty in 220 AD signaled a shift away from the era of ancient Chinese. The Yellow Turban Rebellion of 184 to 205 weakened the rule of Emperor Zheng, allowing militant rebels to assert their strongholds. Several of the traditional institutions of the Han Dynasty were destroyed, and a handful of warlords fought each other for control. Eventually, one warlord, Cao Cao, forced reunification of the factions under the tenuous leadership of Emperor Zheng, the last emperor of the Han Dynasty. Xiao Chao then forced the emperor to step down, seizing power for himself. This transition of power is used by historians to mark the end of ancient China and movement to modernity. Ancient Chinese leaders and emperors established the foundation for a nation built on dedication to the common good. Even the prevailing philosophical ideology, Confucianism, set China on a path to its present state as a socialist country ruled by a highly functional communist party. A world power and economic leader, China is the most populous nation on earth, yet the people are fairly homogenous in their beliefs and views, just as the people living in imperial China centuries ago. To discover more about ancient China, then check out our book, Ancient China, a captivating guide to the ancient history of China and the Chinese civilization starting from the Shang Dynasty to the fall of the Han Dynasty. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.